Critical gag rule is an executive order. It's formally known as the Mexico City Policy. And it states that uh, foreign NGOs that perform or promote abortion abroad are not eligible for any population assistance from USAID. And this is an executive order that was first implemented by President Reagan in 1984. And then it was rescinded by President Clinton in 1993, reinstated by President Bush in 2001, and then rescinded again by President Obama in 2009. And my objective in this research was to determine whether or not this policy is successful in terms of achieving its objective. So the stated objective is to reduce the use of abortion as a means of family planning in other countries. And so I was really interested in whether or not the time periods when the policy was in place actually exhibit a lower use of induced abortion among women. I studied this in the context of Ghana because, as you might imagine, uh, data on the use of induced abortion at an individual level is really hard to come by in developing countries. Um, and so because uh, abortion is legal with less restrictions in Ghana than in other countries, uh, Measure DHS was able to collect uh, special survey data in 2007, which asked a woman's entire pregnancy history, including uh, information on the use of induced abortion. And so that really made this research possible in the context of Ghana. Um, the second reason is that NGOs and private providers actually provide a fairly large share of reproductive health services in Ghana, whereas in a number of other developing countries, um, most of these services are provided by the government, which was technically exempt from this policy. So I felt like if there was any scope for this uh, policy to achieve its objective, it would be in a context like Ghana, where uh, NGOs are providing a significant share of these services. What I found was that for none of the demographic subgroups which I examined, nor for the entire population as a whole, uh, was there a significant reduction in the use of induced abortion. Um, and surprisingly, what I found further was that in the rural population, there was actually an increased use of induced abortion, um, which was rather surprising. Um, but what you, what you read from advocacy groups is that the, the primary impact of this policy was to reduce the availability of contraception. And I do find that there is evidence for that in this data. Um, I find that women experience a higher rate of pregnancies uh, when the policy is in place, and that because they have an increased rate of pregnancy, assumedly unwanted or unplanned pregnancies, they also have a higher use of induced abortion. Um, I further find that these additional pregnancies are only partially offset by abortion and that the large majority of them reduce, uh, result in additional unplanned or unwanted or mistimed births. And finally, that those additional births are disproportionately located in women that are the poorest and the least educated and arguably have the least ability to care for additional children in their households. I would not have been very surprised to find that the policy had no effect, but I was quite surprised to find the significant negative side effects that the policy did have. Um, in particular, the magnitudes of the increases in use of abortion were quite large. So that was really surprising to me. Um, in terms of unanswered questions, I think one drawback of the study is that it really only um, seeks evidence of the impact of the policy in a single country, and that's really due to data restrictions. So going forward, I would like to be able to collect data of a similar nature in other countries um, where the, the gag rule could have possibly had uh, an impact and, and to repeat the analysis in other countries. The policy implication of this research is that this policy, uh, at its heart, did not achieve its primary objective, which was to reduce the use of abortion. Um, and furthermore, that it seems to have had significant negative side effects. So in those regards, I would say that, in my opinion, it is a failed policy. Um, from a broader perspective, I would also say that it has implications for whether reproductive health services are being provided from the private sector, NGOs, or the public sector, that the sustainability of the funding is very important in terms of being able to pro provide continuous services to women that are reliable. And so the more 
providers can move towards self-sustaining in their self-sustainable funding, um, the more able they're going to be to provide consistent services.